All right, we went through uh, three factor models and cap uh, regression analysis as well. Now we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of comparison and discussion on those. So let's um, show here uh, two hypothetical funds X and Y. Okay, uh, completely different. Uh, we didn't analyze them yet, but we have the results here uh, here uh, on the screen. So as you see, uh, we have here average returns over the risk-free asset. Uh, looks like fund B or fund Y, sorry, delivered uh, more returns uh, than fund X. However, we need to account for the risk, right? When you do the cap and regression results, uh, because it's higher beta, it should, uh, it should or it does require a greater risk. So it's benchmark kind of like higher uh, and the alpha, the excess returns over uh, this benchmark, uh, so it's a little bit uh, lowered because of this higher returns required, right? On the other hand, a lower beta here requires a lower rate of return and comparing to its actual return, this fund here delivered a greater alpha or excess returns to the market, right? But the cap M, uh, just a recap, remember we just used beta as an estimation of uh, this uh, undiversifiable risk and this is what would uh, drive uh, returns on assets. Uh, we just have one single risk factor which is beta on cap M. And more sophisticated, uh, although this is a quite simple model, yes, uh, three factors model, uh, kind of break down this beta risk into uh, controlling for other risk components that has been shown to uh, have a close relationship with returns. So uh, this three-factor model uh, controls for the fact that small stocks outperform large stocks on the long run and also value stocks outperform uh, growth stocks in the long run. So when controlling for that, we can run this multivariable regression and we have here uh, these two alphas here, hypothetically. Uh, so the first one, we see that it's uh, beta to the market didn't change much. And those two coefficients are, are very small here, but still uh, it has a positive uh, coefficient here. So when small stocks are outperforming large stocks, this one is kind of doing good. However, when value stocks are outperforming uh, growth stocks, which has been shown to happen, this one is doing bad. Right, so this has a close relationship with uh, small and growth stocks, and the alpha therefore is 2.1 by using this three-factor uh, model here. Uh, same here on the cap M, but we have these two other factors controlled for. Right, uh, on fund Y, uh, we have here the market beta, which has been uh, lowered a little bit. So basically, part of that beta was attributed to other factors, such as uh, small here uh, over uh, large stocks. So when small stocks are outperforming uh, large stocks, this one is actually doing bad, because you see the negative here uh, coefficient. And when growth stocks are being uh, outperformed by value stocks, this one is also doing uh, bad. So we can say here that this fund has a close relationship with large growth stocks. Uh, and because of its uh, relationship with large and growth stocks that have been shown showed, uh, to underperform small and value stocks, its benchmark is kind of lowered. And therefore, its alpha when looking at this three-factor model, uh, it's increased, right? So uh, because when we account for its investment style, kind of we can give it a break because it's uh, investing in categories that has been shown to underperform uh, others, right? So this is kind of the intuition behind the three-factor model. When small stocks here are doing good and growth stocks are doing good, uh, fund X is kind of doing good. Same thing for fund Y. When large stocks are doing good and growth stocks are doing well, uh, it's doing well. See the negative betas over here. And so we can conclude here that after accounting for its investment style, this, uh, by this fact that small stocks beach large and value beats growth, its benchmarks kind of lowered and therefore 
it delivers a greater alpha over here, right? Uh, so that concludes, let me just summarize here uh, and close, uh, clean these drones. Uh, although old, CAPM uh, is, is still very used in corporate finance to determine the hurdle rate of projects. And uh, although it has just one risk factor, a beta butane, it uh, has been proved to work on certain conditions, okay? Uh, for instance, when market uh, or macroeconomic news are announced, uh, it has been showed, uh, proven to uh, predict prices. However, recent models, more sophisticated models that would incorporate other factors or treat the risk with uh, a little bit more detail have been proved to show, uh, to better predict returns than the CAPM. One of the models is this three-factor model that accounts for difference in this uh, investment style, like small versus large and growth versus value. Uh, but there are also like five factor model, seven factor model, which include, uh, which will include uh, other factors, uh, which can tell a little bit more about the investment style of this fund and maybe account for its risk properly or on a more proper manner and uh, result in different alphas than the CAPM, uh, although, uh, maybe more reliable uh, alphas or measure of excess returns or performance, okay? So this is it.